fourth generation Sarasotan. Her father, Dr. Ed James, was a community leader and host of Black Almanac, a show that aired on WWSB ABC7 for over 40 years. And I may get a correction on that from my guests in just a moment. Following in her father's footsteps, she is currently executive producer and host of Empowering Voices, also on ABC7 here in Sarasota. Though she began her career in television, they, she moved later to get her MBA and join one of the largest advertising and marketing agencies in the world, J. Walter Thompson. Her creativity and leadership gained the attention of the White House, where she was recognized for designing customer responsive service models that set the bar for organizational operating systems. And yeah, I'm going to ask her about that as well. Today, Renee Gilmore is here. Renee, welcome. Bob, thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to seat, be seated and talk with you. Well, and you know, we got to work a little bit when I was at ABC7. And as I just said before we started recording that you were just like a, a, a ray of sunshine. You were just such a delight to to work with and, and I'm thrilled to have you here. So, you know, I guess we could go on for 20 minutes with this mutual admiration society. <laughs> yes, we could, uh, but, but, but I are, know we won't. <laughs> we know we won't because we've got things to talk about. And I, I got to start right off with, and I've got my, my notes here. What is customer responsive service model? What does that mean? Okay, so when I tell you, it's going to be familiar. Yeah. So I worked in marketing for quite a while, and I was at a conference in Washington, D.C. At one point, I, I met the Secretary of Labor, the Florida Secretary of Labor. We have a chit chat. She's from Florida, I'm from Florida, and there we are in D.C. having a conversation. Again, she's the Secretary of Labor. We started talking about some of the things that she was concerned about, which were, at the time, becoming more customer focused and more responsive in terms of how we interact in government with the residents of Florida. Uh. So of course, you know, with my marketing hat on, we have this lengthy conversation. And the long story short is that she invited me to come on her staff. And it really took some thinking through and some talking through, including talking to my father, who was my uh, confidant and, and advisor in all matters. <laughs> and he said, you know, from a position of sitting in the office of the Secretary of Labor, you can have an impact on so many things that you otherwise would not be able to do. And that really is what made me transition from private sector into the public sector. Because I can tell you, Bob, I thought, who wants to work in government? I won't be able to make an impact, won't be able to do much. You know, I, I had a different thinking about government. Mm -hmm. But he was absolutely right on when it came to understanding how policies are made that impact our everyday lives. And so, you know, the times when people say, why does it take so long to process something? I can't get a response when I get a phone call. And government usually is slow to be responsive. And so things like bringing technology into into the environment so that you can have tools that help assist. So my whole responsibility was changing the way we interact in government with the people who pay for government, mm -hmm. uh, being more customer service oriented. So for instance, you know, changing the attitude of when one comes in and expects that you're going to be treated, oh, I'll say, I'll get to you when I get to you, right? <laughs> no take a number. It <laughs> Take a number, no sense of urgency. It's by the book, well, my paper says this, and this is the way we're going to do it. Almost as though you are beholding as the taxpayer, to me, I'll get to you when I get to you. So that whole nature of how we treat people, and as you can imagine, coming from a marketing background where everything really is about the customer experience. Long story short, a lot of the things that we used to do, behaviors that we had, changed that around so that um, 
had a different perspective. And so it was modeled, um, able to be modeled, and it was something that the White House said, this looks, how, looks like the interaction that we should have with people, respectful, um, courteous, and most importantly, efficient. So you were, you were working for J. Walter Thompson, and then you moved into the government sector. No, no? actually I was working for GTE. Oh, for GTE. Oh. Which is now Verizon. Sure. In their marketing department. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes. But you did work at J. Walter oh, Thompson. Oh, yes, absolutely. Wow. And loved yeah. it, loved it, loved it. In and fact, then, I'll just put a plug in yeah. for Diet Coke. That was one of, my, one of the brands that I worked on. I usually have a candidate <laughs> sitting right here. That's wonderful. Um, you made the transition to government, and then you transitioned or climbed yet another mountain. You came back to Sarasota at, at some point, and you came back to television. Well, let me just say that. How does, um, how does that all connect? It's a whole lot of things, but I, I liken it to this. There is no one single thing that like completely satisfies me, so I have to have a lot of things going on, and I can manage a lot simultaneously. And so um, my coming back to Sarasota really was a function of, at a point I opened my own business, a consulting business, I'd already always maintained some presence in Sarasota because as you said, my family is here. And so my husband and I at that time were living in Tampa and just coming home, what I always call Sarasota home, coming home regularly. But you know, Sunday night would come, we'd pack up, go back to Tampa. It, but it dawned upon me, there's no need for us to be in Tampa when all the action, especially our family action, is right here in Sarasota, so. Oh, I, just... I, I love that, that the real action is not in Tampa. It's here <laughs> in Sarasota and Bradenton. So yes. much going on in, in both, both communities. So I love that. So we just moved back and, um, and so, and it worked out to be perfect. I say it was a God thing because when I came back and moved into the residence that we do, that we do own, when I came back, it was four years before my father passed. And I really feel as though it was a God thing because we had no idea that he would fall ill. And um, I would have been driving back and forth anyway, but that span of four years, because he was ill, passed unexpectedly, but those four years were just fantastic mm. because then we had an opportunity to, now we talked on the phone every single day, but this gave me an opportunity for us to say, hey, just meet me for lunch today, or let's go grab something to eat for dinner. And so it gave us the kind of um, time that we enjoyed spending. You know, there's something about uh, having a confidant, and you know, everybody's got one if they're lucky enough, right? Yes. Where you have the person that you can say anything to, talk to about anything, and they can give you good counsel because they care, because they love you, and because they're informed. And I would dare say my father truly was the smartest person I have ever known. <laughs> wow. Yes, he wow. knew much about a lot of things. He was an incessant reader, uh, but he had life experiences that few people have. So you still have your consulting business. Yes. And so Empowering Voices is another job that you have, you, another hat you put on during the week. Yes. And what, I how absolutely. else do you spend your time? Or do, well, I mean, you I, know what, I will tell you that Empowering Voices really takes a lot of time because here's the thing, it's not just a show for me, just as Black Almanac wasn't just a show for my father. It really is a way of life. It's a community-based program. It's about understanding what's happening in our neighborhoods for sure, right here locally on the Sun Coast, and how we connect with the rest of the world, how we interact with the rest of the world. So all those things that people often see on you know, national television, um, how does that impact what's happening right here at home? Yeah. And how does, how does what we do here at home impact the national scene? 
if you knew anything about my father, you know that he was a uh, advocate and he very much understood the importance of politics, the role that pol policies, uh, public policies and relationships play in our daily lives. So I would say he was a, a political beast, if you will. He just consumed everything political. And I would say that my myself, my two brothers, we are very much like that also. We consume a lot of politics. So being in the community and understanding all the connectivity that we have to each other and to the rest of the world, that's a full-time thing. It's, a, it's life, it's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Are there any politicians in your family? No, we don't have politicians in the family. We are very, very busy doing lots and lots of things. But I tell you what, I recently came across in my reading that there is uh, there was a James that was in the state house here in Florida doing during Reconstruction period. Oh wow! And this particular James came out of the Jacksonville area, which is where my father's father people were. So I have no doubt that when I finish my research there's likely to be a connection oh. to the Reconstruction period and it stands to reason that because we are such consumers of community and politics mm -hmm. that I'm pretty sure that we're they going to find that find he was there yeah. during Reconstruction. Oh that's fantastic. Now um, your father passed and that was 2018. 2018, so four years ago. And is that when you stepped up to take on his, it is. his TV and you know role? what, when you talk about, when you say like is, this is the second, um, second mountain, in that sense it probably would be the third because I worked at WWSB, which was then called Channel 40, when I was in high school. So I have grown up in and around um, Channel 40, <laughs> WWSB for many, many years. It was a, a high school job for me. When I went to Florida A&M, uh, I interned there. And so interning for the summer, it was like, oh, fantastic. I'm gonna get paid for doing what I had to do anyway. <laughs> so that was wonderful. And um, when I got out of, when I completed my communications degree, it was my first job. I came mm -hmm. to ABC 7 and worked there until I went off to get my MBA. So yeah. I did empowering, Vo excuse me, I did Black Almanac um, for my sit-in periodically with my dad when mm -hmm. he was building that show mm -hmm. over his 47 years. So it was like going home. 47 years and that's yes. the correction. I know I mentioned 40 years in your intro, yeah. but it was 47 years. Um, and that's quite a, a long run. Not too many people can say that they did something for 47 years that and have true. success and with it. And especially in television. And uh, what we believe, including at the station, it is that it is the longest running public affairs program in the Southeast. We did that much research when he, when he was living. So we're pretty sure of that. And you carry on now. I tell you, it is, um, it's, it's something that is really a part of us because, again, it's not just television, mm -hmm. it's not just the public affairs, it is life for us. So the mm -hmm. things that we talk about are things that impact not just our lives, but life here on the Sun Coast. What's most important to you? Well, you can imagine family is most important to me. And I think that our family is very much a reflection and an extension of the entire Sun Coast community. I say family because again, family is close. We reflect, we believe very much what goes on in the rest of the world. So when I say I'm concerned and, and family is most important, my personal family, but the extended family. I'm fourth generation. I love people who I love the people who live here. It's why I want it to be back home close every day. It just it makes sense. I wish I could say I was fourth generation <laughs> of well, I am fourth generation of an of another place, White Plains, New York, but you know, my family left there as, as a kid, so I don't really have that connection. 
uh, like you do with, it with is Sarasota. So, it's so warming to go to. So one of my very, very dearest friends, I, when I think of her in terms of relationships, I remember meeting her when she came to my door, knocked on it, I was in seventh grade. <laughs> wow. And so being, you know, being in a place where you run into people who you went to kindergarten with, sure. you know, but, you know, having a circle of friends who you have known since you were literally in kindergarten is just absolutely phenomenal and such a blessing, I feel. You have managed to achieve so much over the years. Um, what's your greatest achievement? Well, I appreciate you saying that, but I tell you when I look at the kinds of things that members of my family have done. You know, my father, um, pretty much his whole life dedicated to community service. My great-grandmother, um, you know, having led um, the wait-ins for, for to, inter, to integrate the beaches. So for me, it seems like minuscule and I'm waiting, okay, Renee, kick it in gear. When are you going to do something that's really meaningful? So on that note, I'd have to say what have I, what I consider to be um, the most important thing. Or I, your proudest. That I'm proudest of is that I have um, raised a son who I am just a good friend with. He is the salt of the earth. He is a kind, kind person. Um, I just love him. He's my, he's my dear son, and he's my best friend, and he is a really cool guy. I'm very proud of the man that he is. Do you think there may be someday a third generation James family member taking over empowering voices? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, I think um, empowering voices will become, if not a television, uh, community affairs television program. But it is, again, what we do. So you will see empowering voices in some form or fashion, no matter what I'm doing or no matter what someone else is doing. So, yeah, messaging communications I really believe is so important to us as a society so we have to keep talking to each other and I'm always going to look for a platform to make sure that we do have avenues where we can talk and just be and people can get to know each other like we're sitting here talking it makes yeah. a difference in terms of how community lives with each other my final question what's next I'm not sure, Bob, but I know that it will have to involve my changing and growing. I'm aware that it's important to be able to relate to people. And even when we don't agree or see things eye to eye, but I understand that, again, to have the dialogue that's needed for us to be a solid community and have some agreement on how we want to live together will require some reflection and some growth on my part as I start to learn better how to use and adapt to the new rules of engagement. It's a brave new world out there. <laughs> it is. It is. Renee James Gilmore, thank you. Bob, thank, thank you, you. For, for, for stepping out of your shell <laughs> and joining me. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this show. Encourage the emails. Thank you for sending them in right here, info at suncoastpeople.com. I'm Robert Tim, and thanks for watching.